Good day everyone, welcome to Matthew Scar Models. This is video number two on the Wesley Resurrection, if you want to call it that. Uh, the Holy Grail of my kits, which is not quite holy. <laughs> well, it is pretty holy because it was uh, pretty pretty uh, beaten up, as you might have seen in the first video. Progress has been made, so I'll show you where I've been up to anyway. I just like that box art. If I could get a better quality one, I'd frame it put it on the wall. So repairs have been done, got the wings on, uh, repaired the broken damaged fuselage halves. Um, I painted the interior thinking it would be similar to a Wellington bomber. So the metal areas of a Wellington had the interior green. Where it was all fabric, the inside of it, uh, was a brick red colour as far as I could tell with a bit of research. So I painted it like that anyway. Um, there's still a few marks in there from, from repairs from the inside where things were broken. You're not going to see them. Um, and I'm not going to add any more interior scratch build detail to this. You really can't see much anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to build it like that. Um, salvage the... Uh, the the Vickers and the mount. Um, I had to make some little brackets here for the uh, rear gunners glazing. And uh, I can show you why that that originally this canopy had two little pins on it, which went into holes on either side of the aircraft. So the actual canopy was working. Um, mine was pretty glue bombed up and uh, I couldn't get it um, you know, I lost a lot of detail on it. I've sanded it back and in the process of, of polishing it. Um, so I had to make some little tabs so just so the, the canopy would sit there. Otherwise, it kept falling through. And uh, the glazing kept falling through on the inside of the aeroplane. And I do remember that as a kid, that it was a bit of a bugger, um, the more I think about it. Uh, I have repaired all through here. You can see there's a bit of sanding done. Um, I've been lucky that I haven't really damage too much of the existing uh, detail on the aeroplane itself. I've got a little bit of filler, uh, which I've used super glue in there for a bit of strength, and I've added some uh, baking powder to that to act as a filler. There was quite a large crack, and it was misaligned a little bit there, but uh, it will repair up. This side's the same. I've got the instrument panel up the front. I've just got to put a few little bits and pieces on that just to replicate some um, dials and you know clear flashing lights or whatever's in there just something a bit of red and a bit of orange um, not that you're going to see it either uh, did the same thing <clears throat> I was pretty happy that I say I did salvage the the side glazing came out quite well and fitted in quite well this side wasn't really really badly damaged um, in the wing areas and stuff there is some gaps here that I'll fill in later on the one problem I did have was getting, and I'll just move this up here. The original nose, I, 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 when I removed the kit nose that the previous builder put on it, I did break a couple of little mounting tabs here. This has got the standard nose on it, which if you did see the last video, it was still on the sprue in the kit. So I'm, I'm using that. There are some gaps and things here. I've got a little bit of work to do. But I, I think uh, it should come up all right still. So that is that done. I can now glue up the fuselage halves and uh, start working on other bits and pieces. Uh, I got the wheels salvaged all right. Uh, I used some Mr. Dissolve putty and I uh, just went round where it wasn't quite fitting quite well. You might be able to see the where the dissolved putty's gone into the gaps. It's very, very good at that. I've made some little hubs at the end. Um, there was quite a lot of glue and damage on the face of that uh, wheel hub there, the uh, outside. So I made some little caps, some little like bearing hub sort of things, just by carefully cutting some tabs off the ends of these sprues here, these little, uh, these little round circle pieces and sanded them flat and glued them on. Um, that's improved a lot of uh, work there. The landing gear, 
I have been drilled out, replaced the pins for the uh, the wheels. Um, just made them out of some bits out of the old PT boat or the uh, the Vospa that I'm doing the master of the Vospa. I round them up and made some little little tabs. Uh, just to mount these wheels back into again. And the reason why <coughs> I did that was to, one, give them like a better fit. Um, and then I added these tabs back here that were sort of glue bombed. I know that's pretty, pretty hard to see. Uh, they, were, they were glued up and melted and everything just so the landing gear doors um, cleared the wheel. So from the original wheel, this is the only one I had. I made a pair from uh, Sheet Styrene um, and uh, they didn't come out too badly at all. I'm not trying to piss down in my own pocket. Um, so those, they're, they're done. You're not going to start working on those now. I have got a couple more little brackets that have broken off here. Uh, a couple more like actuators or struts which I'll just make for some um, some wire and some bits and pieces and probably be a bit more detailed than what was originally in the kit. The second big thing that was with this kit that was using this experimental engine nose was the, the engine ring that goes on the cowling. They only give you one and you glue it on different or both you know, you can change it around to build one of either two versions. I had this new cowling in the, still on the sprue, um, but I had to remove this cowling from the other old one, which was really, really glue bombed up. It took a lot of work getting off. So as you can see, once I glued it back on, there was a gap around it. Um, I fixed it with some of this, um, which I've got to get some more of, but it's it's very good putty. It's the, to me a grey putty. And then in the process, everything was uh, damaged around the exhaust system and stuff. Uh, so what I have done is I made an exhaust system from some uh, aluminium pipe and uh, made uh, the outlet collector from uh, just some scrap bits of sprue. And uh, it should look reasonably okay, I hope. The... Now I'm pretty sure these are what they used to carry ordnance in the bombs, bombs and and whatever else uh, freight, blah blah blah. I'm not too sure. As you can see, when I got this kit, this back section here was broken off of this one, which is this mounting point where it goes onto the wing. This rear one. I uh, yeah made a new one up now and uh, they all fit on nicely. You can see there was some injector sinking marks through the back of this here, filled up using my favourite putty at the moment, which is that Tamiya Grey. Uh, sanded it down, uh, smoothed it out with some different grades of wet and dry. The engine, <clears throat> this took a lot of work getting out of the old uh, engine cowling for the experimental engine. I'm hoping to get this uh, painted up and everything this afternoon. I have broken a few mounts out of it, but luckily uh, it all still fits in there very, very well. So uh, I'm not going to lose any detail in there. I had to drill out, whoops, the daisy. I had to drill out the, uh, the front of the engine because the old propeller hub was glued in there and snapped off. But if there's no detail lost, uh, it'll come up well. Repainted, and then the tail wheels laying there. A couple of other bits and pieces are laying there. I've got to work on, which is some more pieces of uh, landing gear doors and covers. That's that rear canopy. I've started sanding it out now. Um, it was really, really glue bombed up. If that glue bomb is a good word, isn't it? But it was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty badly. Uh, had a lot of glue all over it. So I'm slowly sanding it out with different grades of uh, wet and dry, and then I'll finally polish it out with some Tamiya polish and some automotive polish. Now the main canopy is a little bit the same. It's got some glue marks on the inside, so it's going to take some some careful sanding and polishing and dip it off in some uh, Mr. Gauzy or some future floor polish, whatever's going to work the best. 
I've still got the propeller on the hub on the sprue. That's the propeller I'll be using for the, the standard version. Still can't work out what that is. Part number, whoops a daisy. I'm not going to break anything else. Part number 29 or 32. I, I, I just can't work out what it is. It's not in the instructions. And I have to make uh, two of these number here, part 30. Uh, it's missing the um, missing one of those. I reckon there's the other one there. 50 and 30. It looked like but that one's missing. Not too sure what that is. I'm going to have to go through the instructions again. I can't find it. I've got the propeller. So everything is uh, ready to sort of start putting that together. And um, the next video, I should have it basic airframe put together and uh, cleaned up, prime it up. What I do have to make as well, which I don't think would be too hard, is an aerial there and a pivot tube there. Um, and do a little bit of research to find out whether these are actually landing lights in here on the other side of the wing. Uh, drill some mounting holes for my undercarriage, which I'm hopefully will be using. Uh, I'll drill a hole carefully cut. Where is my little bit of aluminium? Not too much rubbish. Here it is here. So this is what I made the exhaust out of. But I'm hoping just to drill a hole the right size, put a piece of aluminium tube in there, then I can slip the landing gear in the aluminium tubes to use a mounting post. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this one done. I'll put a few projects aside that I've started because I've sort of got into the groove on this one and um, enjoying actually sort of restoring it, building it, if that makes any sense, and uh, finally get a Wesley in the, in the collection. So until next time, guys, thank you very much. Thank you for all your kind comments. Uh, keep up the great work, everybody. And just remember a little bit of effort. Uh, you can get a good result from an old kit. Um, hopefully, if you've got one of these in the stash, it's not like this one. Um, but I'm not paying what they are asking for a, a mint one, which is about $50 Australian at the moment. This will do. This will fill a hole and um, add to my Maxbox collection. Catch you later. Take care.